Well, hey there, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome to yet another Player Spotlight, where this time we're going to be with Harry himself, as everyone calls you, but it's Variety, the solo laner here for the Renegades. And, man, you've been playing Smite for, for quite some time as well. I think we've got a lot of history players in the league, but, I mean, you've been around not just this year where you've gotten to play on two teams, which is, I think, a, a unique experience in and of itself, but you've been big in Europe before. You've also been a world champion in the past. So I just want to know, like, like, how has things been, I guess, growing up for you uh, in Smite? Like, how have things been getting to the point where you are now, in general, playing competitively? Uh, honestly, it's been like a kind of like a dream come true. In terms <laughs> of, you know, just playing just playing games for a living, like... Yeah. As, like a, as a teenager, when I start, first started playing Smite, like, is there anything else better than doing that? Like, I don't really think there is, like... I've traveled the world. Mm -hmm. I've lived in multiple countries, uh, and it's all just to play like play video games. Like I can't ask for anything else. Well, we get to see you, I guess, now where you are standing forward as the solo laner for the Renegades. But I want to roll back a long time ago and just know, like, where are you from, and what kind of things did you do when you were growing up as a kid that maybe helped, kind of, I guess, like, well, just what you did as a hobby more than anything. Uh, I am from a place called the Wirral which is North West England, right next to Liverpool. Um, I played a lot of football uh, growing up or soccer, if uh, you want to be wrong. Uh, yeah, I mainly played a lot of football, like football, obviously it's a huge thing in the UK. So mm -hmm. I played football since I was like four years old up until about 15, 16. Um, <clears throat> I also played rugby. Uh, when I joined, when I joined uh, secondary school, and I played for our rugby team for about four or five years as well until I left school. Yeah. Uh, so that was that. But that was about it. My life was pretty much dominated by playing football for ten years, ten, eleven years. Do you think that kind of helped get you into the competitive mindset? Just you're playing it so much and so often that you're set to win, and so that kind of maybe helped when you transitioned over towards gaming. Oh, yeah, for sure. I used to be, when I was younger, I used to be a little crybaby whenever I used to lose football games or I used to play bad or I used to get taken off, like substituted off. I always got like so upset and sometimes pretty angry. But yeah, I'd say playing football definitely was a huge factor in terms of like me being a competitive, like a competitive person in general. So uh, yeah, that's probably why I was so driven to become like a professional on Smite because mm -hmm. just growing up, I've always been competitive. Well, so, you know, like you said, you played a lot of football for anyone watching, I guess, in the U.S., a lot of soccer that comes through, right? Yeah. Uh, when did you maybe start to transition into gaming? Like, how did you get into to playing video games instead of, of playing something that is maybe a more traditional sport? Uh, I've, I've always played games. I've played... I've, uh, I think the first console I got was a GameCube, I think, or a PS1. I can't remember, but I've played games since I can remember, honestly. I've also got yeah. an older brother who was into games. I have a cousin who's the same age as me who, who was into games from a young age. So it's kind of just been football and video games for my whole life, pretty much. And when you, I, I guess, like, you know, started playing when you were a kid, this wasn't necessarily a big thing. Like, there weren't a lot of pro gamers, maybe, you know, like, what, Quake 3, I think, had, like, Fatality. Like, there were people who were famous from it, but not necessarily uh, people who were making a professional living off of it. Did you ever see yourself getting to the point where, where you not only were you going to be able to make a living off of it, but also, I mean, you were going to be kind of world-renowned, known as a solo laner? Not at all. I didn't, I didn't get a PC until I was, like, 15. It was only when I got a PC that I found <laughs> out about, like, Twitch and, like, people getting paid to play games. Like, when I first found out about people, like, playing games, for, like, like professionally, mm. I only wanted to do it to get, like, a free keyboard, and that was it. Like, a free keyboard and mouse, that's all I cared about. <laughs> I honestly had no idea, like, how big it was until yeah. uh, I started. I think I hit, like, level 27 in Smite, and I joined the team, and it was weekly tournaments for money. And we played in them, and the team was so bad, and I was so bad, but I was—I didn't care. I thought I was like so excited to just like try and like take it to the next level and be a part of something mm -hmm. that 
I was just willing to like grind out everything. Did you play anything else competitive before Smite, or was that really like your first experience getting into a, like a competitive game? Uh, no. Uh, Smite was the second game on PC I ever played actually, because I solely bought a P PC to play uh, Daisy, the Daisy mod, <laughs> and because obviously I was like, I got a PC so late, and all of my friends were just like Xbox or PS3, mm -hmm. I think it was back then, like. They were like FIFA players, COD players. Yeah. So I only had a PC. Like in my friend group, I was the only one with a PC. So I kind of had no one to play with. So I was just scrolling through Twitch and I found Allied Stream. And I was watching Allied for like a month or so. And uh, I was like, I was like, let's, I'm just going to download Spike. Let's just give this game a go. And now I've met some of my best friends through, yeah. through Smite. So it's been crazy. And hey, obviously it started with good taste as well, right? If you, if you followed it from Allied Stream, everybody knows yeah. that you definitely got in on the right foot. But, you know, you are also one of the players, like, a lot of people have moved, even, you know, in the U.S., they've moved over just to come here for LAN. And granted, maybe LAN isn't the, the most accurate term as of right now, but they've moved into yeah. Atlanta. And so I guess, like, you know, how did that discussion go down with your family when you were saying, by the way, not only am I going to go make a living off of playing this game, but also I'm going to move countries in order to do so. Uh, they they were down for it. Uh, <laughs> they've been very supportive ever since the first line I went to. The first line I went to, I think, it was like 15 or 16. I think it was 16. And obviously, when you're a 16 year old kid, telling your parents that you're going to go to Germany to play in a tournament for a lot of money, they're obviously going to be a bit skeptical and be like, what are you talking like? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, my, I had to take my dad with me to that first LAN. Uh, but ever since then, they've been, like, very supportive and they've let me, like, travel to whatever I need to travel to. And obviously, I went to America in Season 2 for the first time on my own. Uh, and... And yes, I mean, ever since the first land, they've kind of just been very, uh, like, open and allowing to, like, do anything related to Smite, so, yeah. And it actually probably helped, right, having him come to that first land, because it was just, they got to see in person what it was going to be yeah. like, so maybe a, a little bit that came through. Uh, what was it like, I guess, growing up at home? Was there anything that, that maybe, like, helped, I guess, like, you know, brothers, sisters, family that maybe helped push you into gaming, or, or did you just kind of grow up in a, I guess, normal, regular life? Um, I wouldn't say push me into gaming because yeah, like, for as long as I can remember, there's always been like a console in the house or like a Game Boy Color, whatever they were back then, Game Boy Advance. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of a PC, though, I'd definitely say it was my older brother because he had a PC a couple years before me, and he was like playing like League of Legends or. He started playing Daisy back then. I was like, okay, I need to get a PC. I, I was just begging my mom for Christmas to just let me get one. And she <laughs> she eventually did after a long time, but yeah. So uh, moving more towards, I guess, you know, away from the, the life you had growing up and uh, even before you moved over to now where you are, right? A lot of the players specifically now on the team able to kind of spend time together and living in a unique area. You spend a lot of time with, other European players. Now you're on. Uh, you've been on two teams this year that have played with you know multi nationalities. I think is the best way to word it. So how important do you think it is having some of the behind the scenes stuff, right? Like just hanging out with the guys on your team, spending time with them away from Smite. Uh, I think it's probably the one of the most like undervalued thing you can have to be a, like in a team because being able to just. I mean, obviously, this year it's been difficult to just leave the house and, you know, go and yeah. do something together. But in general, like, just going downstairs to watch a, cinema, uh, a movie together in, like, the living room or cooking together or just going out for walks, like, around the neighborhood. It makes, like, it makes talking about the game a lot easier in general. It also makes, like, if you're just better friends and if you criticize each other, they're not going to take it too personal or, you know, mm -hmm. start, like, disliking you because you're calling them out when you're trying to make them a better player. So, yeah, I'd say, like, I'd say that's one thing I think is, like, super undervalued is just being a good, like, good friends outside the game. 
Uh, it's definitely been helping out. I think a lot of teams, specifically now that everyone's kind of living closer to each other, have gotten to be uh, a little closer with everybody. But what kind of stuff do you do, uh, if not just you, but also you and the team if you happen to go out? But what do you do when you want to kind of chill away from Smite? When you're like, okay, you know what? We're done with scrims. We're done with practice. We're done with the games that we're playing. What do you go to do to just relax? Um, This year, I've been, well, ever since joining Renegades, I've been going for a lot, a lot of walks with Ven and Lass because obviously, well, we just like going for walks in general because it's just, I don't know, it's just nice to get out the house and get some mm -hmm. fresh air. But also Ven has two puppies living here, so we take them out. Uh, me and Lass also have been cooking a lot and after we cook, we'll like watch a TV show. We've been watching The Boys Season 2 so far, which is pretty good actually. Uh, so yeah, it's mainly just going for walks, cooking together, and then watching like TV shows and stuff. And so, like I said, you've been playing for a while, and you had mentioned it earlier, and I think I should have asked this when we were talking about it, but when did you realize that you were going to be able to get like here in Smite, right? When you were going to be really good at it to the point where you could be a professional solo laner living with your team? Um, I think it was one of... Because back then, there used to be two tournaments, I think. There used to be like the pro tournament and like mm -hmm. the casual tournament every weekend. And I joined a team called Worth Gaming with Shaggy Shank and Carino and Ninja Baba, if anyone can remember him. And we also had a Millsy on that team for a while. Um, and we played in a tournament and we got like, the I think it was the first tournament or second tournament we played and we got such a hard bracket. We had to go against teams like who had like Zalian, like Shadow Nightmare and Frostjack back in the yeah. day. And we had to go against uh I think it does another really good team which people rated highly. And we beat them and we made it to the semi final against TSM and we had such a close set and we were so close to winning it. But I think after that mo after that weekend that we were all like uh we were all just thinking that we can we can go like all the way and be like an actual considered top team in, in Spain. Well, hey, I mean, you've been able to, right? And like I said, you kind of drop in names that I, like, hadn't, I don't want to say forgot about, but I haven't heard Ninja Bobat in a long time here in Smite. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think, again, showcasing that you've been playing for a while. And, you know, when you first started out, were you always a solo laner, or how did you end up, you know, becoming the solo laner that you are now? Uh, When I first started, I don't even know what, I think I was just playing... But when I first started, it was two one two meta back then, so I was playing mm -hmm. either side lane or mid because when I stopped, I started playing Kibo. I was like a oh, Kibo one trick, but then I started playing, <laughs> and then I switched to the dual lane or the second dual lane uh, carry. But I think back then it was like a melee carry, so I was playing like Thor and Herc and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then eventually jungle came around. I switched to jungle, and. I was pretty bad at it. <laughs> yeah, I was actually really bad at jungle. <laughs> and um, I can't, how, how did I switch this? Oh, I can't even remember. I think I think I just started playing solo because I enjoyed the role a lot more. And I liked the gods there, I think. Well, hey, I mean, it's worked out for you, right? Since you made that transition. Yeah. So uh, it's been going forward. Is there another role that you would like to play? Like, if you were ever given the option, would you transition away from solo or are you just solo laner for life now? Uh, I'd like to play mid. Because I don't think the mid, the mid gods are just a lot more fun. And obviously, it's like the complete opposite of being a solo laner where you're an actual like, carrier of the team and mm -hmm. you're the one doing all the heavy lifting late, uh, late game. So that'd be pretty fun. Obviously, that would mean I would like to play AD carry, but at the same time, like dual aid is just dual aid is just a no go. It's just a <laughs> especially on AD carry as well. You get in camp like twenty four seven. You're getting invaded. Yeah, I'll give that a miss. Yeah, and plus they're they're all the way on the other side of the world. That's a whole different lane. Uh, nah, just stick to mid. You could probably yeah, exactly. butt Venenu out of there for a little bit, right, and find your way over, <laughs> at least for a little bit. Uh, you, again, have been playing for long enough that there's been a whole wide variety of gods that have come out, and sometimes really, really overtuned, sometimes not so much. But do you have, like, a, a favorite god that you've played throughout the, your tenure in Smite? I'd say Release Bologna was fun. Because really she was OP. Was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Uh, I also like playing Terra Solo actually because I don't know, like her her ult obviously being global back then meant you could just AFK in lane and yeah. press five, press four, and when basically win the game from solo without doing anything. So yeah. Well, there you go, Terra Solo. Way back when Terra Solo. Maybe now Terra Solo, a uh, little shaky yeah, yeah, on yeah. bringing her not, forward. Not, Either not way, today. it's still a fun one to play. And now we can kind of transition. You know, competitive history. You've been a, a player in the game at, at the highest of levels as well for a long time. But do you have a game that maybe stands out to you the most? One that either afterward had some emotional feelings, or a game that just meant a lot to you? Uh, hmm. I would say game five against Paradigm in season two in the Worlds in Super Angels quarterfinals when I was on Dig, because the first three years of my career I got like a lot of. I got a lot of crap from like the casters or analysts back then for like just being a bad player. And that LAN, we were so close to uh beating Paradigm in the first uh the first set. And game three, I think I soloed Zelia and was carrying pretty hard. But we ended up losing the game because we threw, unfortunately. But um I'd probably say game five because I prob that set in general I think, I think. I just showed up as a player and, you know, mm -hmm. proved that I wasn't, like, as bad as what people are, like, making me out to be. Made your stamp then, and now, I mean, look, you're still going, right? So you've definitely yeah. been able to hold on to it because of that. And like you had mentioned, because you've played on, on all these different teams, you've also then played with a whole slew of different players. Do you have one or two maybe that are kind of like your favorites to play with that kind of left a le uh, lasting impact on you that you just enjoyed spending time with them a little bit more? Um, I'd say Ataraxia for one. He's just choice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just a, I don't know, he's just a great person, like just a great teammate, and he was the one who obviously gave me the opportunity to join his team in season three. Mm -hmm. Um, and he had faith that I was like a good player when obviously some people didn't rate me, and I'd say probably Nate's one of them, and then there's obviously you know Tricks and Fred, yeah, who are just I've moved to Denmark and I've lived I've lived with them and. They're just they're just great people to like be around and I don't know. I just probably them three. And so I guess not so much, you know, I guess Nate and Trix because they're still over there in Europe. In fact, I think Ataraxia doesn't play anymore as it comes forward. But yep. Cubo, uh, you find yourself up against kind of often at least, you know, three times so far this phase. What's it like, I guess, playing against a former teammate like that? Like, does it ever come up uh, like between you guys or do you still just hang out and chat like it doesn't matter? Um, well, when it comes to people, someone like Fred, obviously, it just comes, we, it's just like, we're still friends, we still talk, you know, yeah. like, the game doesn't get between us, um, yeah, but for some others, that is not the case. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that either way yep. you know there's you've been a pro for a long time in the game and now i think it's even more different than what we would see competitor and like a, a ranked game or even a casual game definitely a casual game as it comes forward but if there was someone uh, either just most of the regular players in smite or even someone who's looking to get into competitive much like you used to in the way way back when what do they just not know is different about becoming a pro for Smite? Like something that you just wouldn't know at that level of play. Uh, you mean you mean in terms of like mentality, like the mentality? Yeah, like uh, like what what makes the the biggest difference like for you now as a pro that maybe somebody who's just playing the game regularly is kind of interested in getting competitive but don't know yet that they would need to, to kind of know going forward. Um, it's gonna be a long journey, and. <laughs> A lot of ups and downs, a lot of grinding. Uh, so the biggest thing I could give them is probably be, like, be your own biggest critic, you know, and blame yourself before you can blame your team. It's always good advice, honestly. Just, make sure, 
check inward before going outward. Either way, uh, it can lead to some success there. And I've got one final question for you, and this is the one that's maybe just more generic for the rest of the year, whether it's in life or in smite, whichever one you have an answer for. What's your goal to, to do by the end of the year? I think a lot of people, you know, they're looking towards becoming a world champion. That's always the, the primary yeah. goal. But do you have anything else that's on your mind to, to try and complete by the end of the season? Uh, out of the winning worlds, probably just becoming like a healthier person in terms of like eating and mentally as well. In terms of like, you know, getting out of the house, um, mm -hmm. be, like being with friends and, you know, just be like healthier in both ways, like dietary and mentally. Well, awesome, man. It sounds like you've got things figured out. And again, you can always catch Variety playing whenever the Renegades are playing and the SPL. But if there's anything else like, you know, a Twitter, a Twitch, anywhere people want to find you on the internet, where could they find you? Uh, Twitter is VarietyGG and my Twitch is VarietyHC. But I honestly, I don't stream a lot, honestly. So <laughs> I'm not sure how worth that link is. Well, hey, if you go there and follow, turn on notifications, the one time it happens, you'll be alerted and you'll know yep. to go watch Variety when he's streaming. Either way, thanks a lot for stopping by. And, of course, if you're still watching, you can subscribe for more content, more player spotlights, as well as other content. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And hit us up on Twitter, at SmitePro, Smite Pro even, for who you would like to see in the next video. But, again, Variety, thanks so much for stopping by and talking to me, man. It's been a pleasure. I hope you have a good rest of your day. And for everyone watching, we'll catch you in the next one.